When there is no more sizzle in the easel, when there is unattraction in marriage, it is fatal. Marriage is sex. Whoever doesn't want to have sex should not get married. Sorry to bust your bubble, your marriage can die. What we should fear in Christendom is not divorce. Christians can be quite hypocritical. People want to keep a facade. But they don't really care what the actual is. Because Christians don't even know that they should date. They start dating all to continue after marriage. Listen, whatever you have to do to, to, to get it, you have to do to keep it. When there is no more sizzle in the easel. <laughs> And um, I called it fatal unattraction. When there is unattraction in marriage, it is fatal. I, I discovered something that usually I, I feel prompted by God to shine the light on the place where, there's, where the darkness is greatest. On the place where everybody seems to be ignoring. You know, I was having a discussion with a, a couple, you know, and... Um, um, I was having a discussion with them, and before they got married, they went for marriage counseling in a church. I did marriage counseling for them for six months. And I asked what discussions did they discuss with them. And they labeled everything quite intelligently. And I realized there was no subject of sex there. And I asked, I had to ask, they didn't tell you about sex? They said, no. What did I talk to you about? <laughs> in marriage counseling. You know, because marriage is sex. You know, I don't want to go back on that. Marriage is sex. Whoever doesn't want to have sex should not get married. So, Fatal on attraction. Let me start by saying, everything that has a birth certificate is invariably registered to one day also have a death certificate. Newsflash, whatever is born will die. It's not a function or a question of what, but when. It's a matter of time. The moment a person is born, as they grow older, they're actually one day closer to their day of death. It's a sad way to look at it, but truth, true nonetheless. That's why the, um, Moses, the psalmist said, teach us number our days, that I may apply our hearts to wisdom. Because death is inevitable. <laughs> death is, is inevitable. It's just a function of time. If it's born, it will die one day. Amen? If it's born one day, it means that it has qualified to also die one day. When we understand that, then I want to ask us a question. Do we have a certificate for our marriage which will represent our marriage birth certificate? That's on the day that we got married. If that marriage has a date it got married, then our marriage can die. Anything that is born qualifies to die. Yeah. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 27, it is appointed unto man who wants to die. So death is an appointment. <laughs> death is an appointment. Sorry to bust your bubble, your marriage can die. Can't tell you the worst death, coma. The person is not here, is not there. If they are not alive, they are not gone either. It, it, what we should fear in Christendom it's not divorce. That's um, the exception, even though it's quickly becoming the, the order of the day. But that usually is the exception. Um, the worst one is when marriage is going to a state of stupor, where they are neither alive nor dead, usually Christian marriages. I don't know. That's why I said Christians are can be quite hypocritical. You know, I don't know whether you see it. I don't know whether you would know it when you see it. When you see couples smile in church, and then when they get home, everybody goes their way. Because we're in a Facebook on life like world. I don't know what they get what I'm saying. You know, people want to keep a facade, but <laughs> they don't really care what the actual is. 
That's the world that we're in, the Facebook world. Christian marriages get to into a place where they just coast along. I hope you know there are families where divorce is not even allowed. It's, it's, it's a taboo. It's found out. They don't care whether you're beating each other. They don't care whether you're unhappy, but you don't separate. It lets us know that things will naturally die if not attended to. Let me ask this. How did we get to love each other so much? When I say each other, I mean husband and wife. <laughs> How did we get to love each other so much? And you know, um, you, you must understand, at times, couples are not in a good place. At times, the years have not been fair to them. And even when you ask that question, people look at you with a... They look at you, the way a dog looks at the tide for a piece on it, sideways. They look at you as if you're speaking French, because they can't even remember if there was ever a time when they actually loved each other. And you hear people who deny it, they say, no, we never did. And then, that, that's insane. How could you have married? It's, it's, it's not possible. It's, it's, but people forget. Now, how did you get to love each other that much? We fed it. Show me a couple here that the first day you guys saw each other, it was love at first sight for both of you. I believe love at first sight is so trivial. It dies that way. If one person even has love at first sight for both of them, sir, it's Hollywood. Love is not built on the back of fantasy. It's built on the back of real reality. So, if the marriage or the relationship grew because we fed it, that, that's what happened. That's what happened. And I remember my mother once told me that a woman can marry a monkey. I said, what do you mean? So if they hang around, long, each, around each other long enough, they will eventually fall in love. So all this one of, we work in the same place. Or her place of work is on the way to my office. So you always, you are the designated driver. <laughs> of our office. You, and you always carry that. You are, you are feeding it though. You are looking for trouble. Don't, this are some things that function, it's not a function of strength. You can't say you're strong. No, the Bible says flee appearance of evil. And I wrote recently on Facebook that um, weak people fall to evil. Strong people flee evil. Stronger people flee, flee the appearance of it. Amen. So you can't say, oh, we're just very close. You're looking for trouble. Okay. We, we got to like each other that much because we fed it. What happens if we stop feeding it? It will starve. It will die. I told some people yesterday, and I'm sure they, I've shared it here before, but it's, it's good to put people in remembrance of things from time to time. I said that um, Durex, they make condoms. Durex spent $1.5 million um, to create an app. They spent it on research, went to come up with an app that could actually help people's sex lives. Because the more people had sex, the more they sold. That's not so. So they went to, <laughs> they went to you know, help people's sex lives. So they created an app. And after $1.5 million, what the app does, when you download the app and you install it, once you click on the app, what the app simply does is it turns off your phone. Okay, some people get it tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> because the phone is the greatest substance, the greatest hindrance to having sex. It's the greatest hindrance to intimacy. Is that not what we wake up with and we go to bed with? Yeah. Sadly so. And people that shouldn't have any access to your bedroom are constantly there with you because you are constantly chatting with them. Mm. And you now say, no, we don't last me to enter our bedroom. Uh. Okay. If we abandon it, if we starve it, it will die. There's no eternal love. It will die. Let's begin to bring it to a close. As I go into the borderline of the things that kill or cause love and, or intimacy to die. You know, in, in the book of um, Proverbs 26 
and verse 20, it says, For lack of wood, the fire goes out. And where there is no whisper, contentions quiet down. So if you don't put any wood in, you say the fire will die. I love each other. You know, you know these guys don't know what we're talking about. They're not even married yet. So I just sit in beside each other because their hands are touching each other. They, okay, okay. How many people here actually their hands are touching their, their wives, their spouses' own? My own husband is on the other side. Of town. <laughs> on the other side of town. You are in America, it's in China. They just, their bodies are touching each other. And then that pra pra sound you hear, it's not the microphone, no. it's actually sparks. This one is it's the chair he's putting his hand on, not her. It's the chair. <laughs> <laughs> You guys don't know what we're talking about. Right? You don't know. You don't, you don't know. It's still doing you. Gish, gish, gish. Yes. Oh, I'm, I'm, there's no spark. There's no spark, Joe. I didn't even know you had touched me initially. <laughs> Jesus said, somebody touched me. <laughs> Amen. Yet, there's a way by which we can maintain the sparks. There's a way by which we can preserve the love. Preserve all the gish gish. Right? Okay. Causes of death to relationships. Number one, most natural cause of death is old age. That's the most natural cause of death. It grows old. And I hope you know we're growing old. Yeah, yeah, newsflash. Growing old. So your body does not look like it used to look. Hello? Your body doesn't look the way it used to look. You know, unfortunately, there was a time when no matter what I ate, it didn't matter. I don't know what happened. (laughs) (laughs) You know? You know know what makes you feel sad? It's when you feel as if your stomach, and sadly, my wife does not, is not encouraging because she likes it. I don't understand. And we have pillows on the bed. She, your, she too likes it. Yes. Wonderful. Yeah. Even you? <laughs> you can imagine? You know, but I feel even more sad when I see some of my contemporaries and like, ah, you can have lost weight. Now, this is why I'm not encouraging anyone. <laughs> you know, you're talking to them and your, your eye just keeps touching their stomach. You think it's bulging like anyone is he is pregnant? Because men, men cannot carry babies. So you can't ask him, but you know, is it? you're suspected. And for the women, straight marks come in. And bombs where there used to be straight roads. Mm, speed breakers. They kill the speed. <laughs> you can't go out like you used to go, as fast as you used to go. It kills the speed. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So old age, greatest cause of death. Number two, time and familiarity. Yeah. You know, somebody was, was cited and experienced recently that when she and her friends were still going out, that she went to go and use the toilet in his house. And it was one of those, one of those time bombs. You know the time bombs? The ones that when you finish, you want to enter the, the toilet for the next three hours. Three hours. You know, so it was a time bomb, and then she now couldn't leave the toilet because she wanted the guy to enter and smell that. Say, what, what died in you? <laughs> so she stood there and she wouldn't leave. She was like, this smell should go, this smell should go. Say, but now that she's married, she and her husband, they fought in each other's presence. Or, or she fought in his presence. That's what she said. Yeah, that's what she said. You know, familiarity. Couples really play the farting game. Couples play the farting game. Time and familiarity. You get too used to each other. So you no longer pose. Right? Wrong. Thank God. We're, we're having a guest minister come next week Sunday. So he's, he's graced in the area of relationships. He's coming to talk about dating before and after marriage. What a fantastic subject. Because Christians don't even know that you should date. I mean, some people are seeing the dark ages. When people ask me, should we date? I'm thinking, you are dated. <laughs> yeah. So, but what we, do, we also fail to realize that dating ought to continue after marriage. Listen, whatever you have to do to, to, to get it, you have to do to keep it. Is that not so? 
When last we take our spouses out on a date? <laughs> Time and familiarity. You get used to each other. And what you're taking for granted, somebody is scoping outside. Yeah. Let me tell you this. Whatever it is, you're taking your wife for granted, taking your husband for granted. Trust me, somebody is waiting to, to relieve you okay. of your burden. You remember, I just saw that video on social media. One husband that was waiting for the wife and started packing a loadout. And I was begging the man, was packing a loadout. I was packing a loadout. His neighbor was collecting loadout and putting it inside the house. And the guy was realized, ah, where's all the load? They must have put it inside. He said, go and be my people. It was with his own hand. He started carrying his thing back. At times, we don't value what we have until it's gone. Listen, your wife is still hot. Your husband is still a bubble. There are people dying for them right now. Let's not get too familiar. Number three, taking our positions for granted. What's our position? That I got them, I got them for life. Wake up. Don't smell the roses. We're in the 21st century. Smell the coffee. Wake up, man. You think you got them for life? Wake up. You know, many times... Christians can be the laziest in marriage because we think they're not going anywhere. So we take them for granted. You feel as if we came, we saw, we conquered. You know, and, and you know, the, the man usually feels like that. Is your wife a trophy? And for the woman, women will do everything to get into your house. Yeah. If they don't like something, they will say they like it. You smile and all that. And I hope you know that once you get in the house, then they show their true color. Oh, here we are. Yes. It swings both ways. I mean, when they posted something this morning, it's just brilliant. I mean, you can't just say it better. And it was saying something like, uh, no, that don't just say, keep accepting me the way I am. That improve. That no, nobody wants rubbish. Yes. Nobody wants nonsense. <laughs> I was like, ah, Baba. <laughs> and it's true. Nobody wants nonsense. You know, at times, spouses are just behaving nasty, and they know. But they just feel content. They're not going anywhere. And start acting irresponsibly. It's dangerous, sir. It's dangerous, man. Let me tell you this. Your wife is a good person. Your husband is a good person. But all they need is just one sleep. And I know you think I said one S-L-I-P. I said one S-E-L-E-E-P. <laughs> you don't need to sleep once. You get it. <laughs> Did you get it? <laughs> One sleep. How well trained is your dog? People pride themselves in training their dogs. And they will say things like, oh, this dog is so well trained. You give it food and we eat it. It has been discovered those people enforce a show of strength and authority on those dogs. Especially if they're very wild dogs. They train them to stupor. But if those people ever have an injury or they show a sign of weakness, those dogs will feast on them. How well trained is your dog? Oh, my dog, no matter what you give it, no matter how starved it is, it wins what I tell you to. Oh. Okay, let's move on. Number four, lack of continued effort. You used to keep the house clean, but now you're married. You don't really care anymore, right? You don't need to make effort, right? Lack of continued effort. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get deep with it. There are wives, husbands, that you are not making effort in the bedroom. Yes, lazy bones. You don't, you don't, you don't um, maintain your health, so you have been relegated to the ministry of a missionary. <laughs> That's missionary style. There, there are wives there you can't even raise your leg. If you bend, it's just me too. <laughs> Immediately. I mean, you, I mean, I mean, it's just missionary. Are, are you that religious? No, for, it's the same style you have been doing. The three stars. Missionary. Doggy and it's doggy number one. or conventional doggy. And butterfly. Some of you don't even know what I'm talking about. And that's what I've been doing for 55 years of marriage. You'll get, you get boring now. And if you want to leave that like, it's burning me. 
Go and do stretches. That's why they have gyms. So you keep fit. Keep it alive. Keep it real. Keep it bubbling. Keep it sizzling. Scissors. <laughs> One day we were all meeting. One person said, praying mantis. I said, what? I thought it was a Kung Fu star. <laughs> Have we changed the discussion? What are we talking about? Praying mantis. <laughs> Let's continue put F, putting effort. Can I, can I say something to you? My wife doesn't probably know this. Doesn't probably know, know what I'm about to say. I try and put effort every time we're making sex. You know why? Because I want her to look forward to it next time. I don't know about you. I don't like... I don't like being a boring audience or being a boring, what's the word? Is there audience? Performer. Ah, we'll do that for our 45th anniversary. <laughs> but we know we don't longer do any more business, ministry, nothing. We know after it's just retirement. <laughs> Let's spice it up. Let's spice it up. Now you guys are beginning to give me that holy vibes. So I'm kind of look at me straight anymore. And I've not even said anything much today. I mean, I've not, I've not said much. I'm just warming up. Number five, negligence. We starve it out. Sincerely, when last did you send a romantic text? I, I, I'm not sure if I will advocate sexting. But I people say it's the wrong numbers. <laughs> I, won't, I won't advocate sexting. Words are good enough. You understand? Even if you send it to the wrong person, I mean, they won't die. But, <laughs> but when last you sent something, you know, my wife did a, a, new, a new hairstyle yesterday that was really nice, but I didn't tell her. I wanted to. But she got me angry just shortly after she got home. I don't know. No, no, no. we'll, we'll say it. We'll say it on another time. Oh, no, it's you that heard that. You know, women don't hear that kind of thing. One man told his wife, he said, I love you so much that if it was a mistake marrying you, I'll do it again. He said, hey, if it's a mistake marrying me. <laughs> <laughs> Pay for me, oh, brethren. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. Negligence. Listen, listen. You know, there are stereotypes that we have. Part of the stereotype says that Men don't appreciate you praising them on their looks. They appreciate them praising them on their wisdom. Bone can rubbish. Every man likes when you tell him you're looking good. Is he preaching with his head? <laughs> preaching good. <laughs> <laughs> I know, you, know, you know what the irony is? You know what the irony is? Somebody will tell them on your behalf. My, my, wife, my wife actually tells me when, when, when I'm dressed up, say, I, I bobo. But I think she doesn't know where she learned it from. But I remember that today. Shortly after we were married, I think she was just pregnant then. Or she had, I mean, it was just shortly, not long after we were gotten married. One day I dressed up. And I, in those days, you thought that was a, was a profession. Madi, kaka, di koko. I dressed up fully. She said, uh, what are you feeling like? And one, one other lady was there. I said, ah, but it's looking nice now. We are a fake boy. <laughs> oh, yeah, because yeah, you don't tell him, somebody else will. When last you did it? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. It's very fine. <laughs> when last did you tell your wife that she was looking sexy? Or oh, isn't she? Oh, she is. You just have to open your eyes to see it. Because if you're not seeing it, somebody else is seeing it. And let me shock you. One lady, one guy was chasing her in the workplace years ago. And she eventually fell out. When she finally gets pregnant, this guy will leave her. She got pregnant. The guy still kept chasing her. Until when she was like eight months pregnant. And the guy was still like, baby, you know, I've been chasing you. I said, are you mad? Can't do this thing. She said, I want you plus the belly. I will even take the child. You better appreciate them. You better damn well appreciate them. Because if you don't, somebody else will do that on your behalf. Yes, I love this number six. Incompatibility. Now the word has been greatly misunderstood. 
Because we used to hear those words in those days, compatibility, are they compatible, are they compatible? And we already felt they were saying, are they similar? No! In fact, the, the more different you have between husband and wife, the more compatible you can become. Because compatibility simply means you having strength in the person's weaknesses. And vice versa. And I was using an illustration, you know, just the other day, about back in the days, in the days of communities and villages, a village over time will have evolved its strength in warfare. But those villages will have weaknesses in farm produce. And that village or kingdom will have exercised its own strength in farm produce. So they would strike a covenant, usually through marriage or through paying tributes or whatever it became tithes. They will strike a covenant with each community so that they will, they will protect the farming community and farming community will provide... That's what compatibility is. So the more different you and your spouse are, the more advantageous it is for your relationship because that means that some people, their differences is not more than 50, 30. So that means that they have only 80%. But some people's differences is 50, 50. One person in that direction, the other person completely in the other direction. Trust me, they have 100%. So what is compatibility? It's coming to a place of compromise. To realize that their difference is not a difficulty. The fact that they are different from us, the fact that our spouses are different, doesn't mean it's a problem unless we make it one. And let me tell you this ironically, the things that you um, um, contend, contest the most in your spouse, usually what they are praising them the, the more outside. Good illustration. The guy has a crazy terrible sense of humor so guess what it's life of the party when it's in the office after closing everybody comes around this table especially the young ladies with their mini skirt that has a slit how can a mini skirt not have a slit and then you know there's slit there's heat that was one that's on the front how can a mini skirt have in? as i was saying and they'll come and say they'll say you're so funny the guy will not close from the office and go home Guess what the wife says at home? Allah, Corey, we won't call it here. I've come up here, yeah? So for those that don't understand Yoruba, say, you can't even take anything serious, useless man. I've, everything, just laugh. Is everything laughter? Is, is everything a laughing matter? So what happens? He wants to stay more at work. Because that's where his fans are. Everybody wants to go where their fans are. And just want to come home. Unless when he has to, just come and sleep. Can I say this? For wives that their husbands are not born again. I don't know why it's really more than the reverse. You hardly will find a case where the husband is born again and the wife is not born again. Have you realized? Because yeah. my wife say, follow me to church. <laughs> you know? But if the wife gets born again, and I know a particular scenario in which what got them hooked on each other was like the fact that they used to go and drink beer together. That's what they love the most. They would drink themselves, why was it? Complain, they would drink themselves silly. And they now got married and were still hooking the beer and hooking the clubs. And it was a trip for them to go to the, which one is the next winning club, and then the wife not get saved. And then she doesn't apply wisdom. And start doing holier, holier, holier than thou. You lose your husband. I've told a Christian wife before, if your husband asks for beer, serve him. The only reason why I'm not allowed to serve him beer is if he's not cold. <laughs> <laughs> Refrigerating, it's, it's just being smart, is it not? It's just being smart. Be smart. Don't let them go and drink it outside. Why? That's where he's, he's watching Ronaldo and sipping that beer. Is where he's going to say, your wife said what? She said what? I need slapper. Next time the wife says that thing, what do you tell God to tell him? He might say, slapper, 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 slapper. <laughs> it's where they will tell him that, ah, oh boy, he's the night is too young now. Ah, he they come out, they will chill now. Some babies, they come and we're just three here and there are four of them. You just hook the fourth one. Nothing. Just hook them. Me just entertain and say, you're not going to feel alone. Mm. I'm going to talk like the people in the world. <laughs> <laughs> After all these years of being born again. Come away. Come out. When the madman has been insane before, even when he's cured, you see it in his eyes. You know, he doesn't look at you. <laughs> well, you know what I'm talking about. That's what happens. It's better drunk at home. Praise God. Okay. Last but not the least, not enough sex. 
Aha, uh-huh. good place to close. Because I said we're going to have, make a commitment. Not enough sex. Can I tell you the truth? All these factors combine. Actually, the sex is where the sizzle is. All these factors we have talked about combine to a natural process whereby as time goes by, your partner becomes less desirable to you. Have you ever bought a new shoe before? First time you ever buy a new shoe, you're so excited. Is that not so? Let me give you a better illustration because we have past levels of shoes. New car. Oh my God, new car. You're washing it every morning. I don't know what you get what I'm saying. <laughs> new car. You not get wax. You not wax. You not shine it. You not smile and see your teeth to say, yeah, you. <laughs> you spray dashboard. I mean, and if you're not washing, your, they're taking the car wash and you tip the guy extra to put extra wax on it. And they don't sun, sun, leave it in the sun for like one hour. The thing will melt. They're not waxed. <laughs> <laughs> that same car you use it by layer me too <laughs> that's a matter of time that same car I was, I was jogging around the estate recently and I saw one car my god it was beautiful it had a blue, blue chrome color oh my god it was fantastic the tires, the allows it was a regular 200 bench back in the day that was somebody's dream I looked at that car and there was a datum parked in front of me and that datum was more desirable. <laughs> <laughs> because the time is far gone. Whatever you have becomes less desirable. But can I tell you a lesson in life? Sadly, I'm a professional making obituaries. I make obituaries a lot. And I sadly have to sit down in front of loved ones and see the regrets in their face for not realizing how little time they had left. To spend, to spend with their spouses, their siblings, their fathers, their parents before they died. And it's always sad to see how they will forever miss the times that they had with them. And those times you come to a realization, whether the sibling or whether the spouse snored is not what matters at that moment. In fact, afterwards, you will find spouses that can't sleep anymore because there's nobody snoring in the bedroom. Isn't that ironic? And all through that person, when that person was alive, that snore was a problem of contention. Is that not sad? And you realize that people come to a place where they only find a thing after it's gone. They only find it after they have lost it. Is that not sad? And can, can, I, can, I, can I tell you the truth? If your spouse dies, you will be married. All things being very equal. You will be married. But let me humbly say to you, you feel like you have challenges with your spouse, and I, even with marrying might be actually an opportunity at the second, second start. Unless if you're going to marry somebody of the same sex, you're going to have the same problems. And you know what, what, the, what the difference between them and your spouse? You have already trained your spouse to a certain extent. This one, you just want to start all afresh. Listen, those things that you feel are the problems, they're the minority that we're focusing on, that become the majority. If we don't focus on the good that that person has, we're missing all the beautiful times we can have together. All the lovely, wonderful times we can have together. So I think, I call it a day. The sizzle in the hizzle.